Hi, I'm Sebel Yaakov. This presentation is entitled High Frequency Model of the Physical Inductor, and that's part one, the basic lumped model. There is a relevant video to this presentation. Here is the link, and I'm going to print the link in the description part of the YouTube video that you are now watching. Now this video is the first part of two-part presentation dealing with ways to model and simulate by LT spies the high frequency behavior of the physical inductor, taking into account secondary effects like skin effect, change of permeability with frequency, interwinding capacitances, and more effects. Now this is the first part and then there is a second part which is more elaborate. So why do we need a high frequency model of an inductor? I'm showing here the basics of a buck converter. This is the switch, this is with the diode. And here I've put a parallel capacitance to take into account the parallel or the interwinding capacitance of the inductor, okay? So in this case, aside from the general waveform, the inductor current, the output ripple, then, due to the fact that I have here a path of high frequency, then as I've shown in the video that I've cited, due to the DVDT of these pulses here coming in, you have an injection of pulses that can show up at the output. And at the video that I've again cited, uh, we are showing examples of such spikes that are found at the output. This is after actually additional filtering. So this actually could be a problem. The fundamental high frequency model of an inductor will consist of the inductance. We have here a parallel resistor to represent the losses, the losses of the core. And then we have the resistance. And then we have this uh, parallel resistor. Now running this circuit. I've put also here some strain ductance of the interconnection. So running it for an AC sweep with a current source, we see here typically a resonant point. And this resonant, of course, is the resonant between this inductor and this parallel capacitor. And from which, in fact, usually you extract the value of this capacitor because the value of the inductance is known, it can be measured at low frequency, and then from the resonant frequency, you can actually extract the, the capacitor. So this is what is done, and uh, as I'll show later on, this may cause actually an error here, but we'll talk about it later on. But hold on, this is not the end of the story. We know that first of all, there is a skin effect, not to mention proximity effect, which causes a higher and higher resistance at high frequency. Aside from the DC, we have actually a RAC resistance, and this resistance builds up at higher and higher frequencies, so it can actually affect the resonant frequency. On top of it, we have another problem here, in that the permeability of a ferrite material or ferromagnetic material in general is frequency dependent. And in fact, uh, there is a point here at some frequency that this uh, permeability drops off a lot. Now, if the inductor is just made without a gap, air gap, then of course this will affect immediately the inductance with a gap we know that the equivalent permeability is this expression. This is the total magnetic path length here, this is the total one, and this is the gap length. And here is the relative permeability of the material. Here it is, this is the one, which is now frequency dependent. We are considering the fact that it is frequency dependent. It starts with a very large number, 2000, but it drops off. And since this is the expression, then as the mu r drops off, then eventually we are going to lose the permeability and therefore the inductance will go down. So let's see how we can simulate all this effect in LT5. I'm starting here with the very basics, 
showing that if you have a passive element, in this case I'm showing a resistor, you can emulate it by a current source, dependent current source. The expression for it is the voltage across it divided by the resistance that you like to emulate. Okay? Well, what it says here that this is Ohm's law, R is equal to V over I, right? So this is a very classical way of actually simulating a resistor. If you like to have changes in it, uh, this is very convenient. And we do like to have changes. And I'm using here the G module of LT5. This is a voltage dependent current source. This is the current source. It depends on the voltage here. So similar to what I've shown, I'm putting these terminals across the current source so as to get the voltage across it. And this part here will be to emulate a resistor. Now the function that I need is the voltage, and I'm getting it from these two terminals, and divided by resistance. And for this case, I like it to be 30 milliohm, so this will be 1 over 30 milliohm. However, the Laplace function lets us actually have an expression as a function of S, the Laplace transform variable. Okay, this is very, very convenient. So this, in fact, says S times L. Okay, so I have here a one which is multiplied by the voltage across the device, and then it's divided by the impedance SL of the inductor to emulate the inductor. So this is an inductor and this is a resistor, very similar to here. This is the 20 millihenry inductor. This is this one, this is the inductor. And this is here the 30 milliohm resistor, one over 30 milliohm. So I'm now running an AC simulation on these two. This is the linear model and this is the Laplace realization. And here it is, we see one curve here because the two are one on top of the other. So it's exactly the same. So we have the resonant, we have the inductance, they have the capacitor, and we see everything very nicely. So it works very, very nice. Now the question is, how can I make the passive elements frequency dependent? Now let's have a look at RAC. RAC can be approximated by this function. This is some coefficient here times the square root of the frequency. Okay? And therefore, what we need here is to have the absolute value because we don't want any phase shifts here. So we need the absolute value of j omega and I'm dividing it by 2 pi in order to get actual frequency. And in the Laplace realization, it will be s over 2 pi square root and absolute value. So this actually is a parameter that changes with frequency, similar to this equation, and I can implement it in LT5 as shown here. So here is how we can implement it. I've put the DC resistance here, and here I'm adding the RAC part here. I'm assuming that this is the function. Well, I didn't do any precise calculation for any given inductor. This is just a demonstration. So I'm starting with 10 milliohm, and then it multiplied by the square root of actually the frequency, well, I didn't divide it by the 2 pi. So this is the RAC part. And here I have now an inductor. This is the basic inductor as we have seen it before. But now I am dividing it by this function, which is like a low pass filter. And the breakpoint that I've chosen here, just again for demonstration, is 10 to the 6. Actually, it's omega, right? It's not uh, frequency. So the frequency 
you have to divide it by two pi. So it's a little bit low uh, because I would like to see the effect. So I've moved the breakpoint a little bit lower. But of course, everything is uh, scaled to a given situation. You might have a case in which the resonant frequency is much higher. Uh, so this is just a demonstration. Okay, so this is the Laplace expression for a 20 millihenry inductor, which is dropping at a frequency which is like uh, one mega divided by two pi. Okay, so this is a frequency dependent inductor, and this is a frequency dependent resistor. So let's see what I'm getting here. Well, in this case, the two are not identical. This is assuming a linear case, and this is with the Laplace case, in, with the number that I've chosen. So we see that due to the fact the inductance is dropping, then the resonant frequency is moving. In fact, I can actually extract the inductance in this simulation by just dividing the voltage by the current and frequency, and I've corrected it with the 2 pi. So you see very nicely that the inductance starts at 20 millihenry, and for the particular number that I've chosen, start to drop at about 100 kilohertz with a, say, a knee here, and then it goes down, of course, to very low values. So at this frequency, the inductance is lower, and therefore we have a resonant frequency which is at a higher frequency than just assuming a linear case. So if you now use this resonant frequency to extract the parallel capacitor, you are in error because this is not the right inductor that you measure at low frequency. Okay? So there is a problem here. Well, maybe in some cases it's not that important, but just the fine details are the fact that the inductance here may be different. But that's not the end of the story. As I'll show in part two, in some cases you may have multiple resonances. So you have parallel resonances as you have in the, in the case that I've just shown. But you have also serious resonance, which is very bad because the impedance here is very low. So if you have a noise or harmonics at this range here, it will penetrate through the inductor. So all this will be discussed in the second part. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.